Hello friends and welcome to another vlog. I am super hyped today to say that we are starting the Meredith vlogs, which I'm excited for. Like kind of an arbitrary deadline of the beginning of April, so that gives me all of February and all of March to do this, which for me is not a lot of time. So let me walk you guys through a little bit of the project for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about and are new here. I have like 10 yards of this black watch tartan wool fabric that I got at the Pendleton Mill and it occurred to me that Merida's dad has a tartan that he wears, a plaid as it were, that he wears uh, like next to his belt and it is very black watch adjacent. So I thought, hmm, what if I made a Merida bustle dress? Like, hmm, I think it's fun to take Disney princesses and, and move them forward. If you guys are interested in making Disney princesses of your own that are historically inspired or want to like restyle some pieces you already have, go ahead and do that and send those to me. I would love to see them. I am super into Disney princess. I mean, super into Disney, like in general. So if you guys, if you guys are into this project and want to make one of your own, if you like Merida, do that. If you like another princess, cool. I'm here to see that. So since I think it's not a lot of time, I do have a black skirt that I made for the Hogwarts Express bustle dress already. It's silk, not wool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that I suck and I can't possibly get the rest of this done in the next few months. Uh, even though I probably can. Um, but I'm going to assume I can't, and I'm going to use that skirt. Meanwhile, I have also ordered three other colors of material, because you only need three and a half yards for this skirt. So I've ordered it in two different colors of green, because there's this, like, this color green, and then also this color green. But then there's also this color blue, which I don't even know if the camera is picking up. But... Yeah, so I ordered like a navy and a hunter green and a forest green because they were like five dollars a yard. <laughs> so this is not helping me with my stash problem. Let me just start with that. But I might make skirts for all of them. It's just cotton broadcloth though, so it's not like a huge deal. But I thought I would give it a go anyway. So we're just going to start out with the black silk skirt as the base and hope that we can make another skirt in addition. Then I was looking at the overskirts, looking through all of my overskirt patterns, and the one I like the best for this project is this one. I'm kind of a little disappointed in that because this is the same overskirt that I used for Watson, and now I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> the reason <laughs> the reason I used it is because I like this overskirt. So I'm gonna give this a go. I I don't ever do what are these ties right here? Yeah, I don't do these when I do it. Uh, the, my only concern is I have never tried to make an overskirt with wool before and there's a lot of pleats in this thing so I think I'm just gonna have to be very deliberate about my pleat and my stitching of the pleats down and stuff like that so hopefully this will work with me and if it doesn't I will abandon ship and try something else but meanwhile I'm gonna give that a go I usually like to use a new pattern and like see what that new pattern is like but in this case like it was the pattern that I think fits the best. The um, 1880s, which is when the jacket is inspired by, has a bunch of overskirts that are very like apron front. So the, the whole front is covered by like either a somewhat triangular piece or a rounded piece or a squared off piece in the front. That's not always my favorite, as it turns out. Uh, Hogwarts Express has an apron front and it does inhibit movement a little bit, and I don't think Merida would really like inhibited movement, so. Now comes for the challenge of this situation. I've chosen this as the bodice, which is a horrible thing to show you because you don't have to make that that long, which I probably won't. Um, so let me show you what it looks like on the computer. Okay, so here is the new and improved version of this. I do like that there's so many options for the front of the bodice. I like this pointy part right here. I think I will probably make this bodice here and then it looks like you can make your tails you can make your sleeves full length or more three-quarter length and then you can make your tails actually shorter or longer depending on what you want so I haven't decided what I want to do but I do want to check out like how these tails are done because they're they're super cute and I, I like this just in in theory and I think it would look great in wool so 
This is why I chose this jacket. I haven't made this bodice before. I'm very excited to see what that bodice is like. I tried to take my own advice, and one of the things that I advise you guys is when you're making something, make things that are 90% comfortable for you and 10% pushing your bounds. So my 10% is this bodice. <laughs> and the rest of it, well, the skirt I don't even have to make technically, although I probably will. And the overskirt I have made before, but I've never done it in wool, so that gives me a lot of comfort, but also pushes me a little bit. So we're giving this a go. Since this has already been cut out, the pattern's already cut out. And since I have made this skirt approximately six times now, seven times, something like that, obviously this one's already cut out. Not a big deal. So the thing I'm going to spend my evening tonight doing is cutting out this bodice pattern and figuring out, like, it's weird that this thing doesn't show you all the fronts or anything, right? Like, it seems to me like it should. And even this paper doesn't really show you that. So I'm like, huh. Interesting. So I'm going to go through this pattern and see what's what inside this pattern and make sure everything's cool with it and get everything cut out so that everything is ready to go for when I want to sew. One other thing I didn't mention is that the skirt, the black skirt that I already have, regardless of which skirt I'm going to make slash use for this, so we're just going to assume it might be that black one, that one does need a couple of things. It needs closures, which I never got put on. <laughs> super easy it will take me 15 minutes to do although I kind of want to no I think I did measure it over a corset already so I think that's fine <sighs> the hem though all my hand stitched hem work has got to come out because it has horsehair braid in the bottom and I hate the way that it looks like it holds it out weird and funny and uh, it's not my jam so part of me wants to try tarlatan and part of me is just like let it be it'll be fine by itself so I do want to roll that into this project so that's sort of like it's care of on the side so I think I'm gonna try to do that as well hello it's the next day I've had kind of a weird day and it's very unproductive and it's 11 30 at night now <laughs> it's not like unproductive I did get some stuff done and marked off my list it's just not I, ex I pictured this day of like all day sewing and that didn't really happen I as I grow older have become more and more intolerant to onions and garlic and shallots and, and those kinds of things and I uh, ate some French onion soup earlier and I didn't even really eat the onion part I just ate the broth part Apparently that's a nope, and it didn't used to be a nope until very recently, so. Anyway, while I was laying there, howling about how I didn't feel good, because <laughs> that is my way. I am a giant wussy when I'm sick. Like, if I don't feel good, I just lay there going, I don't feel good. Anyway, <laughs> my poor husband, he brought me toast and a ginger ale, and I do feel somewhat better. I was lamenting over the overskirt, because I'm just like, mm, it's not my favorite. Like, I loved it for Watson. But I don't want to use it again for this. So I looked around again and again and again and finally I've decided that this one is the one to go. And also it lets me have the Nightmare Before Christmas moment of saying it's TB364. Which makes me really excited. <laughs> so um, I'm going to make this one. The picture looked pretty. And so this is, this is the one. This is the one I'm choosing. So that means I need to cut the pattern pieces out for this too. Which had been done on the other one. So... I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and uh, maybe cut some fabric a length off. It calls for four and one third yards, all sizes. Some brilliant person in my comment section, and you know who you are, looked at one of my vlogs where I bought the fabric and was like, oh, you bought 15 yards. I'm like, thank you. Now I don't have to pull it all off and measure it. So I have plenty of fabric for this project, so that's fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and do this uh the blue fabric did come in also so I will show you that in just a second but I want to cut the amount of fabric I need for this off so that I can steam it so you don't you're not I'm, it's wool so I'm not gonna wash the wool ever but in the process of making this I will be ironing with steam and stuff and so a good way to pre-shrink your wool is to literally just steam the crap out of it before you start and let it shrink up as it's going to and then start cutting so probably what I'll do is I'll cut this out and I'll cut the wool off and steam it and then let it sit overnight to shrink up as much as it's going to and then I'll start cutting it. Of note with this wool is that it grabs onto every piece of schmuckus that it possibly can one times one times 
So the blue came in and it is definitely, it looks a lot lighter on camera than it's looking in real life. This is a much darker, less vibrant blue. It's definitely not the exact same blue as the blue that's in this uh, situation. This is significantly more purple. There's a better comparison right there for you of the blue. I still like it. Like, I think this is definitely Merida blue, which I think is pretty. So, uh, I might make a skirt out of this. I might make a skirt out of one of the greens. We'll see what the greens look like when they get here. I might make all three skirts and just have three skirts for this. Who knows? So, we'll see how it goes. Right now, I'm going with a black skirt. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna go cut. Okay, I have cut off for an third yards, which is what this says it needs to survive and to create itself. As you can see, it has some wrinkles in it and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and pre-shrink this. And how I've learned to do that is by steaming the crap out of it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, is I'm gonna use this giant ironing pad and just steam the living crap out of it. <laughs> uh, you, can you hear Keanu screaming? He's like, mom, where are you? Uh, so the reason you do this is because shrinkage can happen. Like if you go outside and it starts raining in this outfit or you go outside and it's even really humid and your wool soaks up a bunch of the water, it can shrink. So you don't really want that. <laughs> I will especially be doing this for my bodice, like double time because I can't have that shrinking because that thing will already be tight. So I am going to just steam and steam and steam and steam this until it feels steamy and that will help shrink it down. Okay, so that was epic. It is now out completely flat. It hits the ground and puddles just like a little bit on both sides, but I'm gonna let it dry out completely so that it is nice and shrunk. I don't think I'm ever gonna use my ironing board again. Like if it was not currently providing storage solutions in my craft room, I would fold it up and get it out of here because it's kind of just in the way. Um, for people who are new here, this cutting mat is a giant piece of felted wool and I just I do put it down my table is wood it is a butcher block countertop from Ikea like it's designed to be a kitchen counter so it is designed to get wet for sure so but it does also have um, a plastic giant grid underneath it so that protects the wood from the steam that goes in there and you know more heat and whatever so I would say that if you are going to use these wool pads and you are going to have and and you have a wood table you might want to like cover that with something like I don't know if this is a great idea uh quilters seem to think it's fine though they all seem to do it so I use a lot of steam like on everything all the time I am like a steam person so I can stick my hand in between the plastic thing and the wool and feel that it is wet in there so I guess if you're going to do that, cool, but maybe pick the mat up and wipe it down when you're done, whatever. It doesn't get hot under there because the wool absorbs all the heat, but the, the water does get through. And if you just leave the mat there, it might ruin your finish on your, I don't know. Anyway, 
this is how I do it. You choose responsibly for your own self. Uh, I will leave a link to this wool mat down below. It is on clearance sale, I guess, um, which is kind of cool. They're probably like, why are all these people buying this? Because a whole bunch of people were like, oh, I got one of those. <laughs> so yeah, there's all different sizes too. So you can go check out the different sizes if you have a different size table than I do. This one I think is 70 inches long, so that means my table is about 70 inches wide. So, yeah, uh, or maybe 68, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'll leave a link down below. I don't get an affiliate for this one at all, so it's just a straight link for you. If you want to use it, feel free. If you don't, you can search out wool mats. I have found other ones. Most of them are not this big. If you want one that's not this big, they're pretty easy to find. They're significantly more expensive than this place is, and I think this place does it for industrial purposes. Like for buildings and stuff, so I don't think that they're like, ooh, I can make lots of money off quilters or sewists or whatever. So I think that, you know, it's like people who you're going to use their venue for your wedding, but they don't know it's a wedding, and so you get it cheap. It's like that. So, um, yeah, definitely don't say, hey, this is for sewing, because um, they might jack their prices up. But also this one's on sale, so it's super cheap. But there are other ones that are on sale too, so anyway, I'll leave it down below for you. People keep asking me how I store that mat. I mean, honestly, it can stay on my table most of the time if I'm not cutting. I'm about to cut. So I'm... I just stick it back in the box that it came in. <laughs> like, it's not really that big. It can go in the closet. Okay, pattern notes on this one. There's an instruction to tape two back pieces together. But in the one that I have, I only have one back piece. And it is shaped like the full back piece. Like, they show you what it looks like once it's taped together and mine has all those parts in it, so that instruction shouldn't be there if they have a new print. Also, they said four and a third yards, so that's four yards and one foot. Let me show you. I already cut out the back piece. And they tell you to put these, like, sequentially, but, like, this is fine. And then all, all of that is extra. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'll use that for the bodice, but like, I'd be bummed if I spent a lot of money per yard when I didn't need it. So if you have 60 inch fabric like this is, you probably don't need four and, four and a third yards. You probably need three, maybe a little bit more, but yeah. So cool. I don't think they like, it says 45 and 60 inch wide, but you don't need that. I guess maybe if you have a print that really needs to go one way, but since this is black watch tartan, it's the same in every direction, so this is fine. So I guess maybe if you have a print like that, but if you have a solid and it's 16 inches wide, you don't need four and a third. Also pausing to say that a woven plaid, so it's not dyed, it's not printed, it's woven the, in, with the thread, the plaid is woven into this. <sighs> so so nice <laughs> because there's straight lines everywhere like your grain line is never confusing to you it's never like hmm weird because the plaid it matches up like I even when I folded it I folded it in half and I made sure all the plaid marks you know because it's it's blocks here so I made sure that these were on top of each other in a bunch of places just to be sure and in fact they were oh that's the one thing about cheap fabric is like it's always off grain it's always like weird in some way. This is so nice. Alrighty, we have everything cut out. Doo, doo, doo. And now I need to mark these pleats, so I'm going to use a chalk pencil to do that. I, I, there's no, it doesn't seem to be in front or back to this, so I feel like it's fine either way. So I'm just going to mark. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is that it told me to line the back of the skirt. I'm not going to do that. Oh, look, I'm allergic to my cat. <laughs> And I was just smooshing him, and now you can see it all, like, going red. Anyway, uh, I am not going to line this, because I don't think they expected it to be wool when they said that. And this is heavy and has enough body on its own. If I regret that, I will just take it apart and do it again. But for right now, I'm thinking nope on that, so that is the, the way I'm going.
one of the things I love about this pattern is it's super easy because there's like a front, a side, and a back, and that's it. So it's like, sew the sides to the front, sew the fronts to the whole piece, to now the back. So I've sewn the sides to the front, and now it's telling me to hem that. So I'm going to go ahead and hem that. I'm also going to pr press the seams open and... I'm thinking about being a freak show and hand filling those. Uh, one of the things I find really funny is see how bright this is? But when you see it, when I just showed you, it's like super dark around the area because this this is so bright that it makes everything around it look dark on camera, which I, I'm just like, wow, that's a lot. I gotta, I gotta play with my camera settings and see if I can get you better sewing shots. I think I'm gonna do some practice. But more importantly, <laughs> I need to make this skirt. So um, I'm gonna get out the the pressing mat and press out some hems. It's like, what does it say that I was laughing at? It says, hem bottom of apron with a small hem, one and a half inch hem seam allowance. I'm like, that's not a small hem. <laughs> like, try to do a rolled hem, that's a small hem. So yeah, I'm gonna do a bunch of pressing now and then come back and do the backs. This, this pattern is easy breezy beautiful. Okay, I should really get paid by this felt pad company but <laughs> I just pinned this because I'm gonna do a double rolled hem and then I'm going to hand stitch it down fill it down so I'm doing that and I can the gr I just love this thing because I can pin it there and I don't have to like normally I would pin it on my table and I have to like, pick it up and carefully move it and like definitely something would get messed up here <laughs> but I don't have to worry about that I can just iron which is fantastic or I would try to do this on the iron board which would be a nightmare because I'd have all of that dragging it down in the back so I just love this. It's great. I'm gonna do the thing that I love doing so much guys. I'm gonna hand sew this hem because I do actually like the look of a hand sewn hem despite the fact that I don't like doing them. So it's hand sew time and I haven't hand sewed in a long time so cool let's give it a go. Okay, the hem is all done in the front, and now I have to use these marks to fold the pleats up. I'm gonna do this off camera because I don't need that kind of stress. So just believe me when I tell you I pleated these myself. Behold, pleats. <laughs> now I need to base these down and then do the other side. Okay, it's literally like midnight and my friend just texted me to be like, I'm making cookies, do you want some? And I was like, yeah. And so we went on a midnight cookie run over to her house to grab some. So I got cookies and now I'm really excited. All right, so the next instruction on here is, if desired, bind, overlock, or otherwise finish the raw pleated edges. So this is they. Um, so all of that side piece that you saw before got pleated down into this much, which is very thin. Um, I have this piece that was languishing in the trash can and I'm just going to use this to make a quick easy binding for this. It's not going to be beautiful because this is um, very thick at this point. It's like, you know, as the kids say, thick. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do my best to just bind this over real quick, uh, hand sew it on both sides, and then move on with my life. Okay, so for new to sewing people, here is what I meant by binding. This is the front of the garment. I sewed a stitching line down it, I just did this by hand, and now I will flip this over. I will tuck this under also. I'm not going to worry about the top because it's going to be inside of the waistband. And then I will flip it over, and I'm just going to stitch this down. I don't want to flip it under and stitch it down 
there's already a lot going on here. It's already heckin' thick, so I don't need to add two more layers. So I'm just gonna pink it and stitch this down on, over on this side and call that a day because on the front it will end up looking something like this where it's just, you know, not raw edged. So, and this is actually exposed. I was kind of hoping that this part would be underneath the back because the back comes up over it. But no, this is on the outside, so I'm just making an edge. All right, that is done. It looks like this on the front, which I find very acceptable. And now you can see I'm running an experiment. So we're checking out what fringing looks like. And this is a pain in the butt. So I'm sitting here just doing this, watching Adam Savage videos. <laughs> but it's fun and uh, I'm gonna see what I can possibly do with fringing. Okay, let's talk through the next part of this. So we have the waistband there, which I have cut, but for reasons I'm gonna tell you in a minute, I might cut a bigger one. I think I just might be more comfortable, I'm not sure. Okay, so all of this right here has to get pleated into this much space. And all of that has to get pleated into this much space because this goes at a diagonal. And I'm like, <clears throat> this is wool. <laughs> okay, cool. And then, hang on, let me get my other piece out. Okay, here is the front of the skirt, the apron, if you will. This all has to go onto this also and it can take up this whole area plus three inches after this mark. <sighs> which I measured it and this was actually like four and a half inches so I'm like how does that even work I cut out the same size as I did for everything else it's a J but this is also like my my corset measurement so part of me is like oh maybe I should actually cut out a little bit bigger of a waistband for this so that I have a little extra space also if this is super snug this apron lays really tight at the bottom front and I'll I'll try to pin this to myself or something so I can show you. It's really, maybe I'll get a tripod out so I can show you. Um, if I add one more letter to this, it adds three quarters of an inch times two. So that would give me that inch and a half, I think, that I need to this, which would make this feel a lot better. And then I could not worry so much about it and I could just make it tighter if I need to you know just set the the closures a little bit closer together if I need to or whatever later but uh, I don't know anyway I'm thinking about cutting a new waistband is what I'm getting at <laughs> and I think I need to decide that right now because I need to pleat all this into a waistband because that's the next step <laughs> let me get out a tripod and I'll show you what the front of this looks like it's cute it's just like I'll show you. Okay, we're gonna see if you can see this or not. So this is the front of the apron. If I were to not pleat it or anything, the sides would come way far back and then this is really tight, which I get, and maybe that's cute. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how I could make it, like, a less like that. Um, but, like I said, if this is snug, which it's supposed to be, this almost closes in the back by itself. Like, I don't even need a back to this. So this is already, like, almost completely shut. So I think it needs to be that the front is, like, a little bit looser, I think, which will give me more room. And it'll give more room to the back to have its own, like, space. Um, I do love the side here. I'm not even sure how well you can see this, but I like it. I think it's cute. I think cutting a, a larger waistband will do that for me. So I'm also, like, kind of wondering if I should, like, tack these pleats at some point a little bit and, like, tack them higher so that... I don't even know if that's a thing so that it like comes forward more essentially so I don't have so much mobility restriction. I don't know, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but I think for now I'm just gonna cut a larger waistband even though 
<sighs> my waist with a corset on is a 38 but it's like right on the corset and I'm gonna have a skirt on and an underskirt and you know petticoats and shifts and all sorts of stuff so I kind of think cutting a waistband is probably a better idea anyway because it'll give me more like space for all the stuff that's gonna be in there eh, I actually might cut the, the jacket out of 40 also just to give myself extra room it does like not everything needs to be super tight <laughs> okay so I think I'm gonna try that if it fails I have this waistband so I'm not gonna throw it out so I'll just take it all off and replete it into another waistband we'll see okay so I have uh, a focus problem <laughs> I have them all pleated in uh, for one side so I still have to do the other side uh, I did it using a new method which I actually really like uh, which is where I set the pins for both sides ahead of time and then I just match them and it gets me a much more even pleat and then I just pinned them down so that it, they would be easy to work with so now it says to sew like you know a half an inch here um, because this will eventually flip over and become the waistband I am gonna do that by hand because I cannot see this going through the machine in any kind of way that would be <laughs> would make sense and I don't think the rest of it would either so I'm just gonna hand set this guy uh, so I have to do this side and then the other side and then set the front of it so I'm gonna do them all separately and just sew them down separately also I draw the line that I'm gonna sew on so just for anyone who comes along and is like how do I get a perfect line but just just draw it on just just draw it there it's gonna be on the inside no one will ever see it it doesn't it doesn't look right here <laughs> but it is straight I'm watching my favorite show ever, which is the White House press briefings, which I find fascinating and even sometimes humorous. Okay, so I stitched down, this is this first line, um, the waistband, which man, <laughs> whoo, doggies, let me just tell you, wool, he... That's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot in here. There's a lot going on. And I used this thread, which I'm pretty sure it must be buttonhole twist. It is Guterman. It is 100% polyester. It's brown. It's the one I have. But it is he hecka thick. Like, just crazy thick. So I'm like, good. It needs to be thick. But I, I don't think this waistband's going to be very tall. I think it's going to be like this big. Um... I also did a second line of tacking down these pleats just so that they stay like, you know, they're not crazy even. They're not obsessively even in the front or anything like that. Um, but I just wanted them to stick a little bit and and keep their, their form up here and not like poof out when it's on. So I just tacked them down really quick. <laughs> so I just spent like a couple hours on one side of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side um, and get that on. And then we tack the front on and then we're done. No, that's a lie. <laughs> then we wrap this tiny little piece around, <laughs> tack the whole thing down somehow, make it look neat, put some closures on, and then we're done. So let me go work on that other side and I will give you a little preview of how I do my pleating or I did this pleating, which actually worked really well. It's probably a method. Unless I was doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, I would use again. It, it worked really well. Okay, this is the back opening. I, I said I was going to do that other thing, and then I was like, actually, actually. Um, <laughs> I realized, like, it'd probably be better if I just went ahead and stitched this down. Normally, this thing would be lined. Again, I decided not to line it because this is already really heavy and big and doesn't need a lining. So this would have been covered by a lining sort of situation. So I'm just folding it back because it's, it's wool. It's fine. I was just going to gently stitch it down and then maybe do a little um, strengthening embroidery situation. Not really embroidery, just, you know, some sort of triangle, triangular stitching. I can focus my camera on the thing I'm talking about. Okay, so yeah, this like spot right here is going to need definitely some loving right here so I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna stitch these down and then I'm gonna look at how I can strengthen this area with some some stitches maybe <laughs> and, then, and then I'll move forward and do that 
pleating we just talked about. Okay, so I have sewn these guys down, filled them in, and done a little triangle situation of embroidery at the bottom there just to like hold that. This isn't going to have a lot of pressure on it, so I'm not that worried about it. It's also not that well done. I don't embroider very well um, because these two edges up here will be closed, so this will just basically hang so it's not like this is a high tensile situation but it is a right angle and a, like a raw edge so I, I wanted to like support it a little bit okay so I'm gonna go back to trying to pleat <laughs> okay so I'm gonna try to explain this all to you um, first and then I'll show you like what it looks like at the end so I take the full piece, which is from here to here, and I fold it in half, and I bring it all the way out, and then I stick a pin in it. I've done a couple of them already. Um, so here's the pin at the halfway point. And I do weave this in and out a little bit, because these guys are going to take, like, some level of, of pain. <laughs> and then I take this half, and I fold this in half, and I put a pin in it, that half, and there it is. Uh, and then I'll, I'll just keep doing that again. And I know the last half uh, ended up having 15 pins, and I think that was four folds worth, so it maybe five. Like, it wasn't that crazy. It's crazy on the other end, because the other end is only starting with, like, I don't know, eight or ten inches or something, and you have to <laughs> get 15 pins in there, but... Okay, so, and then I'll do it, like, one more time. And then you can kind of start doing the math. So I just keep doing this until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But I don't go too far on this one. Because the other one won't just like won't have room for it. So if I did this repetitively, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would end up being fifteen total. Because there'll be there's seven here, this is eight, and there's seven on the other side. So I folded it essentially in half, in half, in half again, and that was it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to do it again on, on this. But this starts here, and I have to do it between here and here. And not even between those two places, because I have to go start a half an inch in. So I put a pin in a half an inch, and then I'll put a pin here, and actually I'll end up with 17 pins in here. But I'll basically sit there and <laughs> keep folding this one in half, and this one gets really close. And that's how you get pleats that are like this, because they're so close. So I'll just do that twice. I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like with all the pins in it. And then you just sit there and match the pins to each other, and then pin them together. <laughs> and it, it works out beautifully. So I used to do this, but I would try to do it together. Like, I would try to pin them together instead of just putting all the pins in separately, and then just matching them and pinning them together. I would try to pin the ends and then halfway but you'd have to like pull one side one way and one side the other way to find the halfway point and like it just gets more and more tedious and then somehow something always goes wrong and you're off and you're like wait what happened you have to unpin it and do it again this is so much easier <laughs> so I'm just gonna use this method going forward I did it on the other side I've done it a couple times before but I like forgot about it and um, now I'm like no I'm sold I'm in <laughs> so I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back and show you the barrage of pins okay so a little pro tip is I did a quarter of it you can just lay it in, that in half to the ha this is the halfway mark and this matches up and then you know where the pins are and you can just pin all three of these in and then you can do it again by just folding it in half and you know you basically only have to do a quarter of it and then you don't have to really fold anymore you can just lay it down and m make sure all the pins match hope that makes sense okay so this is literally how tight these pleats are there's the correct number there uh, and here is what the big one looks like, and each one of these will match up to one of these, which sounds insane, but it actually works. And this crazy party is what it looks like afterwards. I like to do a second layer of pins down just to, like, keep control over the situation, because, like, when you're trying to sew this line, when, like, this is going crazy, it's not fun. And also, you sew from this side which is currently a mess so I have to like straighten this out and then draw a line on it in order to sew from this side. I don't, I, I sew from the side because it's the easiest one to put a line on and not because there's any reason for that so don't at me. Um, so yeah, uh, now I'm gonna put straighten this out, put a line on it and sew this up but um, and I take pins out as I go because they get frustrating. Uh, I leave the second set in until I do 
the um, second layer of tax down and I just do this also because it'll help control the situation when it's on your body like this is already like pretty thick although it's on your backside and you want you want that to be bigger so <laughs> that's kind of okay it just you know keeps everything together so that's what's going on is I'm doing crazy control I think if this was silk this would be so much easier it would be thinner it would it would still be ha like heck of layers but it wouldn't be wool layers thick so these are my decisions I, I can't explain them okay the back is on this is vaguely what it looks like although you know in a in a somewhat strewn on my table sort of way uh, the front of this belt here will tomorrow get a uh, front apron applied to it and uh, we'll go about our business and feel very good about this project which will then be complete but it is five let's just say 30 in the morning and it's time for me to at least pretend to go to bed so I'm gonna go do that and I will come back tomorrow and finish this off and this is a nice project actually so I liked it hello uh, today was really weird. It's super late. I took a really late night nap. It's like 1 a.m. It's 1.45 a.m. and I'm starting for today. Cool. Um, <laughs> I realize I made a, not like a mathematical cal miscalculation, but a, a miscalculation about where I thought this guy was going to land and <laughs> how I thought it was going to be. I thought that the back was going to be overlapped by the front, which is why I did finishing on the edges of the front, that um, binding. No, it says overlap it, but it says it overlap it under the waistband. And that actually puts it behind it. And I looked at the picture and I was like, oh, it's completely wrong. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that like very minorly changes because of that in my head, uh, which is fine. I just have to deal with that. So today, what I'm going to do is sew on this waistband and finish the build for this um, today. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw in that line. So the waistband is now circular, and I have to get the front sewn on here. And I'm going to sew it by hand, just like the back. Before I get on with that, I just want to show you, I this thread is really heckin' thick, and it hurts to pull with your pinky. It was annoying me all day yesterday and it was causing me pain. So I just threw some medical tape there on my pinky so that I can, let me make it bend, um, so that I can grab with my pinky and use it to tighten without having pain. So pro tip. Okay, I am in the middle of doing this. I am to the flat part, which means I can do normal back stitches super easy. That's what the back looks like. Well, it would if my camera would focus. There you go. Um, and when I was in this part, it's real freaking thick in there, just like hot mama thick. So this I did some, I did back stitches, but I did them very small and I did them stab stitch style so that I could get a whole bunch in there and so they would be like perfectly in and out and hold really well. And up here I'm just gliding through, so I'm just gonna carry on and finish this up. And there's going to be some ironing and some felling, and this beauty will be done. Okay, she is attached. Um, so I need to fold this under half an inch, iron it, and then fold the whole thing in half and iron it. And then whip stitch it down. Uh, and this guy is supposed to get tucked over over because it's a half an inch. But um, the thickness is like a half an inch, so there's going to be some creative problem solving with that guy for sure. So, uh, I'm gonna go handle some of that right now. I'm excited. It's looking good. Feeling solid about it. Um, I'm just leaving these edges right now until I figure out what I want to do with, with the trim for this sucker. I do have some ideas in mind. They may or may not involve this test swatch I did, but this is what I don't like about this test swatch is like, this is what wool does when it fringes. So I gotta figure out a way to see if I can make it not do that as much. Cause I can brush this out and it looks great, but then five seconds later it looks like this again. And maybe that's not horrible, but I would prefer it if it was just cute. So I'm gonna leave them raw for now and just get this on. And then 
Once I get it on, I am going to throw it on my mannequin to show you what it looks like over the skirts and I guess move on with my life. Call this vlog good. Hi! I don't normally reshoot, but I'm going to reshoot for you. <sighs> when it's on a black skirt, you can't see it at all. So that makes the decision easy for me that I'm not going to use this black skirt and I have to make one. I mean, I can use one in a pinch for sure. But I'm going to set this back up on some petticoats because I don't really have other skirts of other color. I mean, I have like a red one. Or I just, I'm just going to do it on white um, <laughs> so that you can see what this overskirt actually looks like because I feel like it's unfair to you guys as people who spent the last hour on this voyage with me to not be able to see what it was that happened here and how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up for you and show you the, <laughs> the overskirt. Okay, we're gonna come in closer and see if we can get this to brighten up, and yes we can. So here is the front of her, and a little bit of a silhouette if I back off, because my bright room will give you... So, this is what it looks like on the side. So there's some wrinkly petticoats going on here. A little. Nothing I like more than a pair of petticoats. Um, okay, so one of the things about this pattern is it doesn't have you... It has you, like, pleat these. Like, they are beautifully pleated back here. And then they just sort of, like, fall where they want. And it gets very quickly sort of, like, out of swords. And I wanted to flip the other way when I first put this on. See how it's trying to fold over here. So I'm contemplating, like, laying this out on the table and then tacking these down. A little bit further forward so it kind of holds them in place a little bit more which I think helps also bring this point up a little bit so it doesn't pull in so much so I might be doing that later um, this raw edge here may or may not become the fringe I did find that if I rubbed a dryer sheet on it then that helped so I might be using static cling spray and doing it <laughs> One of the problems is I wanted to do like two inches, but that's actually going to go into this pleat. Actually, it might end up coming out right here, so that might be fine. Um, so we'll see. So this is what the back looks like. A lot of the back will actually get covered because I have that bodice with the tails. So a bunch of this will get covered, I think, which is a shame because this is some some beautiful pleating I did here. So, um, but that's okay. I like the way it looks. If I do an alternate bodice, it will show. I think the fringing would look really nice. This is kind of why I think I should get a green skirt um, or use the blue because it shows up so much better on a color that is not black, as you can see. Um, definitely a brighter color would be good. So I will try them both once the two greens get here, which should be in a couple days. This one is more of a mess, as you can see, like it didn't lay out as well, even though it's beautifully pleated in there too. So I think I'm going to attack these. I'll just leave this. I will attack that problem later. But hopefully this gives you a better indication of what this looks like. It's a great pattern. It's very easy to follow. It looks kind of stressful, especially when you're dealing with wool, when they're like, um, put this 60-inch piece into this 8-inch piece of, <laughs> of space that you have right here. Is this eight, even 8 inches? I don't even, I don't even know. Yeah, maybe. So, um, it seems stressful, but it's actually fine. It works out just fine. And if this was silk, it would work out even better, I'm pretty sure. So, um, so that's what that looks like. I hope you guys like it. I think it's beautiful. I love it's wavy fluffiness back here um I I like how it's like business on the side and party in the front and back <laughs> so yeah okay so I think that's that I I do hate that black skirt <laughs> I, I mean I don't hate it for my Hogwarts dress but I don't love it for this it's just it makes everything just disappear so that answers that question I mean I can wear it if I have to for for purposes purposes unknown uh, <laughs> anyway um, there's fabric coming on Tuesday the green fabric so I'm, I'm excited about that 
So I guess I'm going to call it for this vlog and edit this and get it up for you guys. I am hyped that this worked out as well as it did. There's definitely going to be like nitpicky modifications to this guy for sure that are going to happen and maybe some sort of treatment to it for trimmy bits. We'll see how I can do with that fringe. I don't know if that's going to work out or not. That's a lot of work for it to be super clumpy. So I'm going to, I'm going to try some things. Anyway, please let me know how you are. This vlog was less chatty than normal also, which is sort of strange. I was kind of on a mission for this one, so there's not really very much to update you guys on, like, personal life-wise. I'm just tugging along here in my tower, lockdown-y, COVID-y, blah 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 so I'm not doing anything, like, that worth chattering on and on about, but um, I am excited to get this going, and it's it's going better than I thought it would at this point, so I'm excited about that. This wool is delicious. Let me tell you though that I went on the website and I was like, oh, what if I wanted to get some more of this? And I'm like, $40? They don't even have it um, available on their website, but $40 a yard for that wool, which is actually a completely reasonable price for it, but I did not pay $40 for it. I don't remember how much I paid for it at, at the location, but if you guys get yourself anywhere near the Pendleton Mill, have a swing by. And just pick up anything. They also have all these like remnant bins where they have like two yards of black wool and four yards of gray wool or three yards of this wool. I picked up a bunch of those <laughs> so I'm excited to see what I got because I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, part of what I'm gonna do very soon here which might probably won't make it onto this but I made some space in my garage so that I can reorganize some fabric and some of the stuff in these drawers that are right here here, and the ones that are right here, um, them drawers, uh, because they were out of control. So I got some of the stuff out of those. Uh, I feel very claustrophobic in this room at this point. There's too much fabric. This pile kills me. That basket is now full also of wool, which I'm just like, no, 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 no. This is all gonna go somewhere, so. I gotta, I gotta figure something out because I don't like feeling like this and <clears throat> I don't like having my space be claustrophobic and like not a place that I, I want to go to and where I feel free and easy breezy beautiful. So <laughs> I'm gonna uh, be working on some little side projects here and there to just very slowly organize stuff. I also just like want to go through all my things that are in there and see like do I actually need all this stuff and could I donate it or do a giveaway or something like that to get rid of some of it and give it to a home that would love it. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a fantastic month so far. It is almost Valentine's Day for me. Um, I have only 40 exchanged our gifts because they just sort of show up and there's big boxes around and I'm like, what is that? Chris is like, your Valentine's Day gift, do you want it now? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I got a new heated mattress pad, which I'm hype on and he got coffee, which he's hype on, hype on. The coffee that I got him was from Green Day's coffee, coffee company in Oakland, which I think is really cool and they have like compostable packaging and all of their beans are sourced really like fair trade and organically and stuff so I hope he likes it. Um, we don't normally do Valentine's Day because we're not like artificial holiday believers <laughs> and also we just think it's a a way to make people spend too much money on a fixed menu and I have allergies so fixed menus just like never work for me so uh, we usually do it on a different day so <laughs> we already have although we didn't like go out to dinner or anything. So, yeah, that's what's been going on here. Um, let me know what's been going on where you are. Let me know what you're listening to, what you're reading. Um, I am about to start Minimum Wage Magic, which will be a book. You heard it here first. This is a <laughs> Ladies Who Genre book that's coming up. It hasn't even been announced. It's one of the, the ones that's coming up. Um, we just recorded the episode for We Are Legion, We Are Bob, which is a great book. I loved it. I thought it was really great sci-fi. Um, but like sci-fi light, which was fun. So that is what is reading. I've been listening to my podcast that I love called So You're Wrong About, which is sort of about like current events, but that usually happened in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and maybe early 2000s. So like Monica Lewinsky and um, Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding and like stuff like that. And they tell you all the things that like they found out afterwards because like, when you get news about you, the news cycle just sort of sort of goes, I need information now, and everybody's like, we don't have that, like, there has to be investigations and stuff. And then by the time you get to actual information, like, think about even just, like, COVID, like, what we've learned 
compared to what we thought at the beginning. Like by the time you get to the, that information, the news cycle has like moved on and they don't report like, oh, well, actually Tanya Harding did this or Monica Lewinsky did that or, you know, this wasn't as bad as we thought it was or whatever. And they also talk a lot about like moral panics involved in that. They have like a, a million part up thing about Princess Diana. They have one about O.J. Simpson and that trial and stuff like that. So you get a lot of color to what happened and like, you know, I grew up hearing all these stories, but they were just like news blips and I was a teenager, so I wasn't even really paying attention to that. I just like sort of vaguely knew what happened. So this is interesting for me to find out what actually happened. And um, <laughs> the moral panic thing is funny because they talk about like stranger danger panic and dingoes ate my baby panic <laughs> was one of them and like just all sorts of funny things that like sort of like go away after a while and we don't know why they go away but um people realize oh that panic was based on something that wasn't actually true like these statistics that they were citing were like completely skewed so i've been listening to that a lot so i actually really need to start this book because morgan's probably already ahead of me <laughs> there was a point to this whole story that's not always true with me so <laughs> i got one <laughs> Anyway, yeah, leave me notes about what's going on with you. I had a good time in the comments with the last video. That was really fun. I did actually answer them all, which I was like, woo woo, like, you know, answer or heart them. Like, I read them all, so. Um, and I was like, oh, I remember this. I love this, so that's cool. I have a new 20 questions coming out this week, just like every week. So I'm hype about that. I should edit that video because it's supposed to come out this weekend and it's Friday. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope you guys are well. I hope everybody is safe and healthy and, you know, lockdown or whatever you're in. Like, most people aren't in actual lockdown. I call anything lockdown because, like, basically I don't go outside, but that doesn't mean, like, California is not in lockdown, lockdown anymore. Um, I think I'm allowed to have two other households in my backyard, up to ten people or something like that. I haven't done it yet. But I do need a haircut, so maybe I'll have my friend Ariane come over and cut my hair. It's like absurdly long at this point. <laughs> so yeah, it's been getting kind of irritating. So maybe I'll get that done at some point soon. But yeah, hope everybody's well. I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.